And this is my build site. Yeah! <laughs>
so yeah this is my space and it took me a few years to get to this point this is an aerial view of the roof so my solar panels will go here I have two spots for my fantastic fans I'm going to install two of those guys and this will possibly be a skylight that opens up all the way and I'll be able to climb out of it and hang out on this roof area so yeah, this is what I'm building and it's going to take me a while, I'm sure, but I'm really stoked to work my way through this build and create this space um, that's really going to fit who I am as a person. So excited. This filming location is not going to work out. This is better. So let's get into talking about how I made the decision to purchase the truck that I did. And we'll also go through the process that it took to purchase the truck and get a title in my hand. When I first started trying to decide about living in a tiny house, I really wanted to build something on this. I wanted it to be a flatbed trailer. And the reason why was because all of the examples I'd seen up to that point of tiny houses were all on top of something like that. Until I went to a tiny house seminar here in California. So I went to this tiny house seminar and it was all about the laws and the rules and the regulations and all of that stuff. And I walked away from that seminar feeling this is not possible. California is not friendly to tiny house living. And I was bummed, really bummed. So I put my plan to the side for almost a year until I met a guy who lives in one of these. So I was randomly out rock climbing with some friends and we met this guy who was living in a van. He let us check it out. He gave us a tour of it and I was super pumped. It like relit this fire in me to want to pursue tiny living and I started researching researching sprinter vans and dodge vans and all of these other types of like vans that I could potentially build a home for myself in and one of the things that I was finding was that it wasn't enough space not for me there are lots of people that are living in vans and it works for them and that's the formula that they want for themselves and that's beautiful but for me I wanted to create a space that I could really really live in where I could have my little sisters come and visit me for multiple weeks at a time where I could have friends coming over we could make dinner and we could hang out and we wouldn't feel very cramped I wanted to create a space where I could have a really open floor plan and have my sleeping areas totally separate from my living areas and I also wanted to create something that wouldn't require me to have convertible furniture I didn't want to have to turn my sofa into a bed I didn't want to have to do any of that so basically I was looking for a vehicle something where I could create a middle ground between a tiny house and a van I wanted something in between those two and what I ended up deciding on was this guy. So for my build, I decided to buy a retired Penske rental truck. And the process was pretty simple. Um, before I got to this point of Penske, I did a lot of research and searching. Um, I was looking at all kinds of different sources to buy a box truck because that's where I settled before I made it here. I was going to just buy a box truck and I was looking at commercialtrucktrader.com and I was like, yeah, I saw some options that looked really good. They sound really good. Um, they were semi far away, but it was still reasonable for me to fly there, get the truck and come back. And what I realized was that anyone could be selling those trucks on commercialtrucktrader.com. It could be a dealership. It could be a person just selling a personal vehicle. And there's no guarantees there. They can tell me that this truck is in great shape and I can get there, fly all the way to, I don't know, Wisconsin or something and check out the truck and all the undercarriage is covered in rust. There's no way for me to really, really, really know the true condition of the truck. And then I stumbled across Penske. The process is pretty simple. 
um, you go through their online inventory, you scroll your way through, and you pick the trucks that you think could potentially work for you. Once you have the trucks that you like, you just call the number and you get connected with customer service and you tell them you want to put a bid on the truck. And you can also ask any questions if you need to, um, but then they're going to ask you for the unit number. You tell them the unit number, you tell them how much you want to bid, and then that person takes that number over to the people that make the decision about whether or not they're going to sell it to you at that price. That process takes two days. After two days, your person will call you back and they'll either say, yes, they accepted your offer or no, your offer was too low. And then at that point, you can make a choice to rebid or pay the full asking price, whatever it is that you're going to do from that point, right? So I made my first bid and they told me no. And then I made my second bid and they told me no. And I ended up paying full asking price for the truck. But here's why. The trucks that I was bidding on, they were already on sale. So until the month of April, the end of the month of April that just passed, like April 30th, um, all of the 16-foot box trucks were discounted an additional $2,000. So they wouldn't budge on the asking price because it was already discounted $2,000. So I went with it right and I'm super happy with my decision and I'll tell you why so with Penske there's three different types of trucks that you can buy and by types of trucks you can buy I mean like quality level so they have the value level which is the lowest level and that means something's wrong with the truck they disclose to you that the engine is blown out or the transmission isn't working or any of these other things that could possibly be wrong with it they disclose it and you're buying the truck as is the next level is is proven and the proven trucks mean that they're in working condition that is going to meet DOT standards they'll give the truck a checking before they allow you to pick it up or they ship it to you um, and you'll know that the truck is in working condition and then there's premium I opted for premium and here's why with premium they give the truck a complete look over if there's anything wrong with the engine the transmission the tires the chassis any of those things they will fix it for you before you acquire the truck yourself um, they also take off all the Penske branding if there's any like scratches or anything like that they fix those they paint them for you minus like any like normal wear and tear to the exterior of the vehicle they steam wash the whole thing they steam wash the interior of the box and they also clean inside of the cabin so you know when you get this truck it's going to be clean and it's going to be in good working condition and it also comes with a 15 day Penske premium promise that within 15 days if you feel or you find that the truck is not up to the standards that they said it would be you can bring it into any Penske shop and then they will make the corrections necessary to get the truck to the standard that they told you that it would be in so that really excited me because right right there I knew that even though I would be buying this truck sight unseen that I had some type of security in knowing what I was getting myself into. And then to back that up, I did lots of research and I started looking for reviews. I read a bunch of reviews um, and I couldn't find anyone who wasn't happy with their, pop, their Pinsky purchase. Everyone there, they were happy. A lot of people were like, oh, I'm thinking about getting a second one. Um, I wasn't finding anyone who was saying the truck isn't what they said it would be. Um, the promise isn't what they said it would be. I didn't, I didn't see any of that in my searches. And I'm sure it's out there because people complain about anything. Um, but I didn't find any of that in my searching. So that made me feel very secure that I was getting myself into... Um, well into exactly what I thought I was getting myself into so in two days I get to fly out two days I get to go up to Portland for the first time very excited about that and I'm gonna pick up my truck and I'm gonna drive it back down to California and start the journey of building this thing very exciting about that exciting about that excited about that um, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is insurance and registration so I started freaking out about insurance and registration. Um, once they sent me the title, meaning once I went through the process of, yes, I'm going to buy the truck, 
um, you send in a deposit. The deposit is $500. With that deposit, they pull the truck off the road and they put the truck in the shop so that they can start working on it and doing all the things that they need to do to it, right? Um, and then once that's done, before your truck is ready, you pay the rest of your balance. And you pay that with a cashier's check or a um, money wire. I did a money wire, bank wire, however you want to call it, a wire transfer. I did a wire transfer to pay for the rest of my truck. And then once they process your payment, they send you over the title. I will show you the title. It's sitting right there, but there's too much personal information on there, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, they send you over the title, and once you have the VIN number, um, you can acquire the VIN number ahead of time, probably, like if you call and you ask them for it. Um, but once I waited until I got my title and my VIN number was on the title, I started calling around for insurance, and it was actually super, super easy. So I called around, and... Um, I got an insurance company. I'm not also not going to tell you the name because it's like, I guess, too much information. Um, but I contacted an insurance company and it's the same insurance company that I do uh, my personal car insurance with. So it was a no brainer that I would call those guys. And it was a really easy process. Uh, they connected me with commercial truck insurance and we talked about the ways that I'm going to use the truck. Um, to certify that it would qualify as a commercial insurable truck that I could insure it under those terms and the ways that I'm going to use the truck definitely qualified for that so it was perfect um, and then they got me going and it was super cheap it actually would have been a lot cheaper if I didn't live in California uh, but because of the rules in California um, the minimum amount of insurance coverage that you're allowed to have on a 10,000 pound or greater truck is uh, a quarter of a million dollars. Um, so because of that, I was able to set, uh, sorry guys, I was able to set up my insurance policy, uh, but it was maybe, it ended up costing me like 40, 50 bucks more than it would have cost me if I didn't live in California, but the price was still reasonable. There's one thing that I want to tell you guys to keep in mind because my insurance guy told me to keep that in mind is that with some commercial insurance agencies, they restrict the way that you're allowed to use the truck. For instance, say you get commercial insurance and you stop and you get groceries in the truck and then you get in an accident. If you get in an accident with those groceries in the truck, then your insurance agency can deny you coverage for that accident because you were going to the grocery store in the vehicle. The insurance agency that I'm working with doesn't do that and they don't restrict the way that you're allowed to use it. So that's important. That's all I got for you for right now. Peace. I forgot to mention something. Registration. So registration is the other thing that I was freaking out about in relation to the truck. And I was researching and trying to find the rules for California. I saw this guy in this other video who said something about he got like a temporary like pass to drive around because he bought a bus and he bought the bus from Oregon. And I looked into that and I was like, oh, okay, temporary drive around pass, but that's only for the state of Oregon. And it wasn't really going to do much for me when I got to the state of California. So I researched it and researched it and researched it. And I think I found something that's a little bit of a loophole. My plan for today actually was to wake up early, go to the DMV and get the thing registered. But in the state of California, you have to get a smog test for your vehicle. And then you also have to, the vehicle has to be seen. Like someone in a DMV has to lay their eyes on that vehicle and make sure that the VIN number that you have on your paperwork is the same VIN number that is on your car. I've never had a state need to do that before. Uh, I've lived in a couple of different ones, but California needs to be able to do that. So clearly, I don't physically have the truck yet, so I can't make that happen. California has a rule that you, once you enter the state of California, your countdown begins and you have 20 days from the point that you cross the state line into California to get that thing registered. And it's not really specific about whether or not the car needs to already be registered before 
before that countdown begins. It's kind of like a loophole. They don't really specify it 100%. So that's the road that we're taking. We're going to get the truck, drive it down. We'll have I'll have the title in hand, I'll have the bill of sale in hand, I'll have all the proof that this vehicle was freshly purchased. I'll also have my proof, my proof of insurance. And if I do end up in the position of having to sell that messaging, the messaging that I have 20 days according to the California DMV, I'll at least have all of my other legal documentation with me so that I can prove that this is in fact a new purchase and that I do in fact qualify under the you have 20 days rule to get this thing registered that is the last thing <laughs> so this will be an ongoing journey I will have lots of different build videos uh, showing you every step of the way and I'm going to make sure that I make them as informative as possible I am a teacher it's what I do for a living so I'm going to make sure that the videos are as informative as possible you can see all of the other all of the little parts that you need to see when I'm doing something or performing an action so that you can know how to do the thing if you need to do the same task so subscribe hit that subscribe button down there or down there wherever it is hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos also if you want to follow me on instagram i am summer seeking on instagram find me follow me i'll be posting lots of insta stories about things that won't make their way into the video along the way and i'll also be posting just posts in general about the build and about life and all of that good stuff all right peace yeah. for real this time <laughs>